I turned away a client based on my personal values, and now my business is crumbling under accusations of discrimination. It's a reflection of my commitment to providing a sanctuary where people can come to feel rejuvenated and confident in their skin. I meticulously designed the salon to have a calming ambience, with soft lighting, soothing music, and a clean inviting decor. Every detail, from the choice of high-quality products to the personalized service, was thoughtfully curated to enhance the client experience. I take pride in the fact that many of my clients have been with me since the beginning, and they often tell me how much they appreciate the tranquil and respectful environment I have created. Running my own small waxing salon, Glow and Smooth, involves more than just performing services. It also requires meticulous organization and preparation for each client. My booking process is straightforward yet thorough, designed to ensure that every client receives the highest level of care and attention. Clients book their appointments through an online system that asks for essential information, including the type of service they require and any specific needs or concerns they might have. This system helps me prepare for each session, allowing me to tailor my approach to meet individual preferences and ensure a comfortable experience. I review the appointment schedule daily, making notes on each client's preferences and any special instructions they may have provided. One day, I received a booking from a new client named Alex for a full Brazilian wax. The appointment was set for the following week, giving me ample time to prepare. As with all new clients, I reviewed Alex's information in detail. The form was filled out correctly, and there were no specific notes or concerns mentioned. I made sure to have all the necessary supplies ready and to set up the room in a way that would be welcoming and comfortable. When the day of the appointment arrived, I went through my usual routine of sanitizing the room, arranging my tools, and ensuring that the atmosphere was calming and inviting. I have always believed that the environment plays a significant role in the client's overall experience, and I strive to make every visit to glow and smooth as pleasant and relaxing as possible. As the appointment time approached, I heard the soft chime of the doorbell, signaling Alex's arrival. I greeted her with a warm smile, inviting her into the reception area. My initial impression of Alex was positive. She seemed friendly and somewhat nervous, a common reaction for clients coming in for an intimate waxing service. I introduced myself and guided her to the treatment room, making small talk to help her feel more at ease. Once we were in the room, I began our usual pre-service consultation. This is a crucial part of the process, as it allows me to understand the client's needs and address any concerns they might have. I explained the procedure in detail, including the steps I would take to ensure her comfort and safety. As we talked, it became clear to me that Alex was a trans woman. This realization brought a wave of internal conflict, as I was reminded of the personal boundaries I had set for myself and the agreement I had with my husband. Mark and I had established certain boundaries early in our relationship to ensure mutual respect and comfort. One of these boundaries was that I would only perform intimate waxing services on biological women with female genitalia. This decision was based on our personal values and the need to maintain trust and respect in our marriage. While I have always been a strong supporter of the LGBTQ community, I felt that this boundary was necessary to respect both my own comfort levels and my husband's feelings. I found myself in a difficult position. On one hand, I wanted to provide Alex with the same care and respect that I offered all my clients. On the other hand, I felt a deep sense of obligation to adhere to the boundaries and agreements that had been a cornerstone of my marriage. The internal struggle was intense, and I knew I had to handle the situation with sensitivity and honesty. Taking a deep breath, I gently explained to Alex that while I fully supported her and the LGBTQ community, I had personal boundaries that I needed to respect. I told her about the agreement I had with my husband and how it related to my practice. I assured her that my refusal was not out of discrimination or transphobia, but rather a matter of personal comfort and maintaining the integrity of my relationship. Alex listened quietly, her expression shifting from confusion to disappointment. I could see the hurt in her eyes, and it pained me to know that I was the cause. I continued to explain that I specialized in waxing biological women and did not have the necessary experience to ensure her safety and comfort. I offered to help her find another professional who was experienced in providing waxing services for trans clients, hoping to alleviate some of her frustration. Despite my efforts to explain and offer assistance, Alex was understandably upset. She accused me of discrimination and stormed out of the salon, leaving me standing there, feeling a mix of guilt and sadness. I had always prided myself on providing a safe and inclusive environment for all my clients, and this incident left me questioning whether I had done the right thing. The moment Alex stormed out of my salon, I felt an immediate pang of guilt and doubt. Her accusations of discrimination echoed in my mind, and I couldn't shake the image of her disappointed and hurt expression. I had always prided myself on providing a safe, inclusive and welcoming environment at Glow and Smooth. And now it felt like all of that had been called into question. As I stood alone in the treatment room, my mind raced with thoughts of whether I had made the right decision and what the repercussions would be. In the hours that followed, I found it hard to concentrate on my work. 
The incident with Alex weighed heavily on my conscience, making it difficult to focus on my other clients. Each time the doorbell chimed, signaling a new appointment, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of anxiety, wondering if the next person coming in had already heard about what happened. By the end of the day, word had indeed started to spread. In the age of social media and instant communication, it didn't take long for news of the incident to reach the wider community. I began receiving messages and comments online, some supportive and understanding, others harsh and critical. It was overwhelming, and I felt a mix of emotions, defensiveness, regret, and a desire to explain my side of the story. The feedback was mixed to say the least. Some people reached out to express their support, emphasizing the importance of personal boundaries and understanding the context of my decision. They appreciated my honesty and the fact that I had tried to handle the situation with as much sensitivity as possible. These messages provided some comfort and reassurance during a very turbulent time. On the other hand, there were many who were not so forgiving. I received several harsh messages accusing me of being transphobic and discriminatory. Some people vowed never to visit my salon again, while others went as far as leaving negative reviews online. It was disheartening to see my business, which I had worked so hard to build, being attacked in such a public way. I felt a deep sense of failure, as if I had let down not only Alex but the entire community I had always aimed to support. A few clients cancelled their upcoming appointments, citing the incident as their reason. It was painful to see loyal customers turn away, and it made me question my actions even more. I started to worry about the long-term impact this would have on my business, and whether I would be able to recover from this blow. Despite the support, the negative feedback continued to weigh heavily on me. I found myself replaying the incident in my mind, questioning every decision and wondering if there was a better way I could have handled it. The guilt was compounded by the realization that I had inadvertently hurt someone who was simply seeking a service and a sense of acceptance. Two weeks had passed since the incident with Alex and the fallout that followed. The once vibrant and bustling atmospheric glow and smooth had noticeably dimmed. The salon, which had been a sanctuary of calm and comfort for so many clients, now felt like a shadow of its former self. The backlash from the community had been swift and severe, and I was left grappling with the consequences of my actions. Every morning, I opened the doors of glow and smooth, hoping for a return to normalcy, but the reality was stark. The usual steady stream of clients had dwindled to a trickle. Regulars who had once been loyal to my business were now hesitant, their trust shaken by the incident. New appointments were rare, and cancellations had become all too common. The salon, which had once been filled with the soothing hum of conversation and laughter, now echoed with an unsettling silence. The financial impact was immediate and harsh. With fewer clients coming in, my revenue had taken a significant hit. The bills and expenses of running a business didn't pause, and I found myself dipping into my savings to keep things afloat. The stress of the situation weighed heavily on me, affecting not only my professional life but also my personal well-being. Sleepless nights became the norm as I lay awake, replaying the incident over and over in my mind, questioning every decision I had made. I couldn't help but wonder if I had indeed lacked professionalism in handling the situation with Alex. My intentions were never to discriminate or make anyone feel unwelcome. I had tried to explain my personal boundaries and the agreement I had with my husband, but in the heat of the moment, it seemed my words had only caused more harm. Was it unprofessional to let my personal values influence my business decisions so heavily? This question haunted me constantly. The mixed feedback I received from the community only added to my confusion. Some clients and friends had reached out with words of support, emphasizing the importance of respecting personal boundaries and understanding the context of my actions. They appreciated my honesty and the attempt to handle the situation with sensitivity. However, others were not so forgiving. Accusations of transphobia and discrimination were leveled against me, tarnishing the reputation I had worked so hard to build. I sought solace in conversations with my husband, Mark, who remained steadfastly supportive. He understood the complex emotions I was grappling with and tried to reassure me that standing by our values was the right thing to do. But even his unwavering support couldn't entirely ease the burden of guilt and doubt I carried. In an attempt to navigate the fallout, I reached out to other professionals in the beauty industry, seeking their advice and experiences. Some shared similar challenges they had faced and offered guidance on how to move forward. They emphasized the importance of empathy, communication, and the need to continually evolve to better serve a diverse clientele. Their insights were valuable, but I still struggled to reconcile my personal values with the professional demands of inclusivity. I also contacted LGBTQ advocacy groups, hoping to gain a deeper understanding of how to create a truly inclusive environment at Glow and Smooth. These conversations were enlightening and humbling. I realized that while my intentions were never to discriminate, the impact of my actions had been profoundly felt by Alex and potentially others in the community. I learned about the specific needs and concerns of trans clients and how I could better accommodate them in the future. Despite these efforts, the path forward remained unclear. 
The immediate crisis had subsided, but the long-term implications were daunting. My confidence in my ability to manage the salon and provide a welcoming space for all clients was shaken. The once clear vision I had for Glow and Smooth was now clouded by uncertainty and self-doubt. As I stood in the empty salon, I felt a deep sense of loss. The dream I had worked so hard to achieve seemed to be slipping away, and I was unsure how to reclaim it. I knew that I needed to find a way to balance my personal boundaries with the professional responsibility of inclusivity, but the journey to get there seemed fraught with challenges. The incident with Alex had been a wake-up call, forcing me to confront my own beliefs and the impact they had on others. It had also revealed the fragile nature of trust and reputation in the business world. Moving forward, I was determined to rebuild and learn from this experience, but the road ahead was undeniably steep and uncertain. The lessons from this painful chapter would shape not only my business practices but also my understanding of empathy and inclusivity in a diverse and ever-evolving community. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.